we're dealing with new numbers that are really cool. I hope you're starting to get a feel for how they work and if they feel more comfortable and you're, you're getting used to writing eyes everywhere and watching for your double negatives, all the rest. One of the things I want you to remember is that every time you have learned about a new set of numbers, right? When we move from just doing whole number maths to then working with uh, fractions and decimals and percentages, right? Then when we introduced the weirdo, like irrational numbers, right? Every time we progressed to a new stage, we had to say, hey, be careful, right? These, these new numbers don't behave like the old numbers you're used to. And um, you can jot this down, right? There are some very simple examples of this. We know that if you have something like a half times a third, right? This obeys like, you know, the kinds of things that you would expect multiplication of just whole numbers handles, right? You'd be like, oh, I just multiply the top and then I multiply the bottom. Everything's happy, right? We were really like, this is nice. But then think back to year seven U or maybe year five or six U, right? We then said, hey, but watch out because you can't just say the same laws apply because, you know, just multiplying the numerators, just multiplying the denominators does not mean that you can just add the numerators and add the denominators, right? You're like, hey, watch out. These things are the same. Uh, similar deal with thirds. So square root of A times the square root of B, what's that equal to? Square root of AB, right? And we're like, that's fine, but in a very similar way to this, right? You can't just add these things. If you had the sum of two thirds, um, you can't, uh, you famously cannot combine them. They're like really antisocial, right? So it's like, uh, you can't say, I'm just going to have an A plus B underneath the radical sign, that's what we call it. So you can't do these things, you must be cautious, okay? We encounter similar issues when we move into this sphere, this realm of complex numbers. For example, let's just have a look at this guy here. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to set you a question, a challenge to try and work out what on earth is about to happen. We generally agree that A and B can be pretty much anything, right? Two and three or five and nine or whatever you want, right? But now we're, we're encountering this whole world of saying, oh, I, have, I can have negative numbers underneath my square roots now, right? It's like a whole new toolbox that I can play with. So, so what if, write this down with me, right? What if A and B were both negative numbers? And just to keep things simple, let's, let's just call them negative one. That's the simplest negative number we know how to work with, right? What's going to happen? Well, on the left-hand side, right, you get the square root of negative one times the square root of negative one. We have a name for this now. We're like, oh, cool, this is I. Right? So I squared, by definition, what's that equal to? Negative one. negative one, right? That's by definition. You're like, no surprises here, right? The square root of negative one is that number that if you multiply it by itself, you should end up with negative one. So far, so good. Now let's see what happens on the right hand side. I've got the square root of AB. AB. A, B. Yeah? Just check to make sure I haven't like, you know, pulled the wool over your eyes. That's the square root of AB, isn't it? Well, last I checked, last I checked, negative one times negative one is one. Square root of one, that's the number that if I multiply it by itself, gives me one. Is, isn't that one? It's supposed to be, right? So what, what, what's happening here, right? Something has gone awry. And here's my first challenge to you, right? We're quite happy to accept this. But I wonder if any of you, like think back to when you first learned this. You guys are good enough at maths. You probably just said, sure. And then just did the 50 questions in the exercise and probably got them all right. But why is this true? Like why do you accept that this is the case? Because clearly it's now leading us to some major problems. So I'm gonna leave that as my first watch the next episode, okay?